Yeah, that's, that's a good question. You know, um, and here's my my take on Manny Pacquiao in, in 2018 and 19. I think you know, I do believe that he was uh, doping. Uh, hopefully, he's not doping anymore. Um, I'll go to my grave feeling he was doping. But the, the thing is that I also feel like I also and I was I was also very naive in that I know a lot more now than I do back that I did back then. And I was naive in the fact that I didn't realize the whole sports doping. You know what I'm saying? The entire sport is open. So you can't you can't single out one guy and say, oh man, you know what? It's so not fair. You know, because once they're all doping, it's unfortunate. You, to have a long lasting career, to, to last at the very, very top, at the tippity top of the sport, you're doping. So there's no shot. There's no way you're gonna have a long career at the top of the sport without doping. Because there's too many dopers at the top of the sport. Almost everybody's doing it. So so um, not everybody, but almost everybody, especially the longevity at the top of the, at the top of the sport, you know? Uh, a non-doper will um, will kind of come and go like my, my thing is take, take for example my career you know I came and went at the top you know what I'm saying I was kind of hovering you know I never really stayed at the top but I was hovering I was at the top I would come down I was at the top I would come down I was hovering to, 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 to consistently stay at the top you know, uh, unfortunately that what I've noticed you're doping you know and, and it's a sad sad thing to see but so I I, I, I can't say I, was, I can't say it's wrong that I was criticized, criticized Pacquiao at the time but at the same time, I, I almost, it's almost like I understand it now looking back, you know, and, and it's, it's unfortunate. But luckily, a lot of this reality started coming to me at the end of my career, so I, I, was, I, wasn't, I didn't have to be faced with the, the same kind of decisions, you know. I, I, unlike most of these animals, I have a conscience. Now, speaking of that, right, we see that there's rumors that <clears throat> Errol Spence and Mikey Garcia are not uh, involved in the father testing and things of that nature. Yeah, they are. Oh, they are involved? They are, yeah, they are. <clears throat> okay, because there was rumors that they, wouldn't, they wasn't involved. Uh, uh, what do you think about that fight, though? You think that Mikey Garcia is at a disadvantage coming up to weight classes? Yeah, weight classes matter, man. You know, I think you know both guys are very good fighters, so weight classes matter, and I, I give the advantage to the to the, uh, the bigger guy, you know. But uh, but it doesn't mean uh, there is a bad fighter in that fight. Both guys uh, both guys have shown the class that they have, and uh, when they're in the ring, and then and the kind of fighters that they are, uh, both technically and mentally and physically. So you know, it's uh, it's uh. It's um, it's it's one of those cases where if I'm picking Spence, it's mainly because he's the naturally bigger guy, you know, and uh, I think the technical the technical part of their boxing kind of cancels each other out. They're both elite on a technical level. Well, I mean, no. is, is it unfair that they're asking you? I'm not asking you, but they'll say that being the way that you put it, says Manny Pacquiao, you sit on his fight. Is it unfair because that's part of the part of the reason that people really like you because of your commentary or. Um, I mean, I told Conor McGregor he had no balls on fight week, and then I commentated his fight. I mean, you guys make that decision. Did I commentate it the right way? I, I thought I was the most fair guy on that broadcast. You know? So, so, so I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I, I think, uh, I think, uh, you know, kind of have to move my body and work overall. You know? Yeah. You know, of course, everybody's entitled to that opinion. You know, once I sit down and actually call the fight and watch a fight. I'm not really thinking about anything else. I'm, I'm, I'm watching the punches. I'm watching what's going on, and I'm, I'm kind of analyzing the the action that's in front of me. I'm not really thinking about other things. This is not the way I. If my thought process goes to other things, I wouldn't be able to commentate adequately. You know, my thought process when I'm watching a fight is watching and and, and, and read into what's going on, and, and, and then obviously speaking. You know. Now, for the majority of your career, you came in the ring as the smaller fighter. What does Mikey Garcia have to do to beat Errol Spence? If you had to advise him, what would you tell him um, to do? You know, I, I think he has to have uh, 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 the ability to be in and be out smoothly, transition from offense to defense, and defense to offense smoothly. Um, and uh, you're going to get hit. You know, it's a fight, you're going to get hit. And you've got to hope that, you know, you, you, you limit that damage. You know, you limit that damage. Mikey's got great feet and great hands, you know. He's that, but, but Spence also has, you know, a, a lot of those things, you know. And, uh, you know, he's an Olympian, so technically, you know, when, you, when you're an Olympian, you know, technically, you, you're, you're gonna you're gonna have a guy who's very good technically. So, you know, he's got to be in and he's got to be out, you know, in a way where, you know, he's he's making Spence pay um, without taking too much damage in return. Um, he's he's got to pick his spots uh, accordingly, and and sometimes, you know, the thing about being the smaller guy is sometimes you just miss, you pick the wrong spot one time, and the fight's over. You know, that's what happens when you're the smaller guy a lot of times. So. So it's, again, it's difficult. It's a difficult fight. Uh, uh, but, but like I said, they're both world class. Like, when you watch 
either guy fight on a, on a technical level, you can appreciate both of their both of their technical abilities. You know, uh, you know the way they're in their stance, the way they're having their hands, the way they're able to punch and transition. They have defense to offense, like I just mentioned, Mikey has to do. Um, the angles they use, you know, the way they mix it up you know, up top into the uh, head, into the body, you know, and, and their, 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 their punch trajectory and their punch creativity, their punch selection, you know, I, I, I can really appreciate fighters like that, you know, but, uh, but yeah, it's a tough fight. Now, we what saw uh, Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence confront each other. What's your thoughts on that fight? Are they the two best welterweights you, in your eyes? You know, um, we'll see how Thurman looks when he comes back. But yeah, Thur uh, Crawford has only had one fight at welterweight, so we, we, the book is still out on how he's going to be at, at welterweight. But Crawford is a, is a legitimate world-class fighter, you know? Uh, how, how he's going to uh, uh, play out at welterweight. Uh, actually, now he just beat Benavidez at welterweight mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, he has two. But Benavidez also was not a, 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 a natural welter. He was, uh, he, I remember him being a super super lightweight as well. So so guys who come up are not, uh, like Terrence is a guy who came up as well. So so it's, you know, we'll see how he how he kind of, um, how he kind of grows into the weight class. He's, he's got the world class skills, obviously, and, and Earl obviously has world class skills. So, see, I, I, because of politics, I don't really see that fight happening. There are still questioning Crawford and his actual his uniqueness, so to speak. Um, Thurman has done it, Spence has done it, Porter has done it. They feel that at some point he has to come over to, to their side of the fence and fight them to really secure that. He is a yeah, yeah I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I can't really, you know, Top Rank is a good promoter. He decided to stay with Top Rank. I can't say, you know, Top Rank is a bit more. They're, they're tried and they're tried through and through, and they've done well. And, 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 and all the years they've been in this business, you know, you can see they've been through different generations. So maybe Crawford has made a business decision. But yeah, I mean, when you're making these kind of decisions, I'm sure it has to cross your mind. If you want certain fights, you got to go certain places, you know. And, and I think uh, the, the welterweight division is kind of carried by PBC. So, so, you know, it, it, unfortunately, because of different TV contracts now and whatnot, it's difficult. You know, it's, it's not, you know, as fans, it gets frustrating, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult because, you know, certain alliances get made and whatnot. What do you think about and Kel Brook? Um, you know, I, I probably favor Kel in that fight, but, but um, you know, I, I, I it's kind of weird to even talk about it because it's one of those fights that I think it's going to be more difficult to make than people I mean I don't think people think because I think people know it's going to be difficult to make it's years in the making and it hasn't been made so I think it's one of those fights that you know we talk about but it might not happen either now our Errol Spence is looked at that as the boogeyman division if Keith Thurman rec returns the form who you think um, poses the biggest threat to Errol Spence? Um, you know, we'll see how Keith comes back looking. You know, he's been out almost two years, so you know, we'll see how he comes back looking. You know, it's not just a physical thing; it's also a mental. Thing. You know, how badly do you really want to be in those trenches? You know, sometimes when your life is good and your life is, is chilled out, you know, maybe your desire to be in those trenches is not as as much as it used to be. You know, um, it, it um. We'll see, you know, obviously Keith in his time you know, made his reputation because he was world class at a, at a very high level, you know, so, and that's what Earl is now, so we'll see. Thank you, Paulie. Appreciate you.